Why is that 2013? Boss yeah. Battle 3, whatever. Alright, we're gonna get into it. Yo. Immediate. <laughs> immediate taunt cancel the top flat. And uh, Kara likes his double jumps in neutral, which is absolutely terrible against Pikachu. Yeah, really risky. If. if I, I guess we see it maybe less at top level than we do sort of at, at the mid level Pikas, but if you catch with like an up tilt there, like you, you lost your up, uh, your double jump. That's tough. Down smash. I, I guess there it might have been just the most percent you could get. Yeah, maybe. Interesting option. Hard to say. Okay. I like down smash it. I never know when it's going to kill. <laughs> like, they just keep floating, and then one time it kills. Wow, weird, weird grab yeah. interaction there. Didn't Brody's go Brody's little, way. A little off on that tech, I guess. He had the read, but just sometimes the timing's weird. You only have two frames of vulnerability uh, for the tech in place. Right. Good edge guard there from Brody. Gets the easy stuff. Oh, and he misses stage. I feel like a little bit more DI from Brody could have seen him live there. I mean, Kiro might have gotten the, the edge guard anyway, but at minimum, he wouldn't have just died. Kiro playing around plats here. Uh, it's interesting to see uh, Falcons do that. Most tend to be grounded against Pikachu. Right, just sort of look for that dash grab. You saw you saw uh, Boom Fan doing that earlier. Just sort of took center stage and, and flexed on him with his aerials. Yeah. But nice little standard combo there from Kiro. Brody messing up a little bit. Maybe he should have taken the hand warmers a little ser more seriously. I, <laughs> if I had if I had to bet on what Brody's thinking, I, I don't think he's worried about that. No, he'll be fine. Nice little up and percent there, and the old dash through. Falcon dash smash. is sometimes better than you bargain for. Missed that up B. I, I don't know if he really could have had that. I, I don't know if that was the right option, but oh, nice. yeah, okay. I like that little pivot. He, he kind of read where uh, Brody was going to roll to or, or tech off, off that ledge to Got that little pivot down there. Free for all. Yeah, all right. and it waved right around that uh, up tilt too, which is always yeah, exactly. cool to see. It's like a discipline of when to put out the hitbox, because if he puts out that dare too early, it gets clipped. Right, exactly. Yeah, Pika's up tilt is really annoying. Oh, wow, that fast fall forward air. That's a good conversion there. It's not going to kill, so he's got to get an edge guard here. Yeah, OK. There's that down there again. Wow, okay. great conversion there from Kiro. Very optimal, knew he could get the kill off that. Yeah, that's nice and uh, easy. That kind of shows like how good Falcon's horizontal combos are. Mm -hmm. Like not, which are underutilized. Not, for yes. Sure. Like that Easy speed, there just uh, and kind of similar hitboxes with uh, the F bear, you can really carry them across the stage. Right. If you're like patient with that horizontal combo, it can really net you some things oh, that you nice. wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. I liked what I saw from both of them there. Um, Carol punishing the cross up with that nair, and uh, uh -huh. Brody just really quick out of that with the F tilt to uh, grab conversion. Yeah, Brody uh, takes that stock. Nice turnaround. Brody has been excellent at finishing off Kiro when he's off stage. He really hasn't let him back, which is what you need to do in this matchup. So we'll hope to see him keep that up. He's just maybe got to get a few more openings in neutral. He's not really reading what Kiro's wanting yet. Kiro's playing a little bit of a different Falcon, not doing just a run dash for grab like Dark Horse did, as an example. Yeah, and those uh, down airs so lot, menacing. Seeing a lot of these down airs in neutral sort of bullying him with the threat of the aerial at minimum, even without yeah. hitting it. Oh, that's good DI from Brody, but Kiro so quick to be able to follow up on that. Not going to kill. Uh, we'll see if he Got can a jump, the yeah. guard. And uh, it's going to be a no. <laughs> really, really, <laughs> he's laughing about it. He's like, what did I just do? Oh, huge. Oh, my goodness. Carol's really, I like the way he's using the snare. Uh, yeah. I think the speed, the speed at which Kiro likes to play in both his movement and kind of aggressive style and neutral really lends itself to using Nair more as a surprise tool. Like, it has really good knockback and everything. It comes out fast, as you mentioned. Yes. But sometimes if, if you're, wow, and that's, a, that's an edge guard for Josh. Yeah, and uh, in that situation, we see Pikachu did not cut his toenails and reach out just far <laughs> enough to get the hit. Yeah. 
That was a really interesting game. Definitely different from the other Falcon and Pika matchups we've seen so far in this top eight. Mainly because Kira is playing Falcon differently than we've seen. He, yes. He's doing a lot of those, like you said, you know, throwing out aerials in neutral, little short hop aerials. It's working. Brody's playing a little scared. Kira's bullying him a little bit, getting those down airs when he wants them. But Josh has been excellent, excellent, excellent at finishing the edge guards. And that's that just proved that he, he got four edge guards and, and won that game. There's that Nair. Keeping it real simple. Another edge guard. He led him back on stage, but was able to follow up, get him back in the corner, push him back off stage, and get the easy kill. And a nice showing yeah, from Kiro there. That's a really nice combo from Kiro. Not quite enough to kill. He's straight up down airs, dude. Wow. Yeah, it's, I, it just hits so low, and like if Pikachu's like the dash towards uh, Falcon, they can just really stuff their. Do you approach. think you want to see? Uh, I was just about to say, do you think you want to see some more up tilts from Josh Brody? Yeah, that's kind of like your, uh, I guess, uh, low chart in a way. Well, it's it's, it's like down air will be the dash and grab, uh, but up tilt will be that uh, down air. It, it's it, to me, it's very interesting. Like at, at the level that I often play at, that we see in like D1 and D2, like you see a lot of Pikas that like to use up tilts a lot more. I think yeah. at the higher level of play, it's punishable a bit more. Yes. It's and it's less active than using up air as an example. But yeah, and it's kind of dangerous to use at some percents too. Uh, at low percent Falcon, I think it's right. kind of even. Uh, yeah, you can't get a conversion off of it if yeah. you up tilt. You know, like he gets out sooner, but. Yeah, you oh, got to like combo from here. Okay. Nice up B's, but good follow up. Carol finally whipping out that um up B, but whiffing. Oh, very like tricky idea, zip zap there from Josh. I really like that escape. But yeah, we'll see we'll see if Josh starts pulling out that up tilt a little bit more. We already saw it a few times. Just because, as you said, it is a really specific coil to short hop down air from Falcon. Yeah, and uh mm. Kind of lazy approach there from Brody. Yeah, definitely. He, he was a little too antsy. He really wanted that that opening. And Kiro converts off that. Yeah, and I think uh, Kiro's kind of putting out moves that's punishing Brody's play style, like with that lack of up tilt. When Falcon's whipping out um, that back air, for instance, uh, it's kind of hard to like get that nice dash to grab like uh, compared to his other aerials. Right. Uh, but, you know, Stuff like pivot up tilt or like a backwards up air will beat that. Yeah. We'll, and we'll, I don't we'll really see, see that at all in Brody's game. He's, we'll see if Brody, yeah, he's not really switching much up. Which is, I think is okay. Again, he's converting his edge guard, so like he, and he's won a game off just that, so I yeah. think. Yeah. He's gonna need a little more. It's hard in this matchup because it's so volatile that like all you need is like one little opening. It, it, it's risky to feel like you want to just like change something up and do yeah. a, a, something different because it's always a risk and you don't want to get off your game plan when you know you can get the kills you can get. Like especially when you're not like used to doing it too often. A little bit of a flub there from Brody, but he should be able to take this yeah. out. I think Brody felt that if he zipped straight to ledge, he wouldn't have zipped, he wouldn't have snapped it right away. Yeah, it was a weird angle. Yeah, he was like just below it. That should be a stock. Yeah, great conversion there from Kiro. It's not quite, but oh wow, yeah, great coverage there from Kiro. Make yeah, sure so, he gets the, re the recovery. So we see a lot of situations where when you tech in place, the momentum will slide you off the platform. He was like kind of covering that with the F air. Oh, nice dash away. Ooh. Hook, yeah. Yeah. Bread and butter. All right, so Kiro, Josh Brody on his term in life here. Yeah, and his approaches are getting, I don't like the floating nares. It's so easy just to run yeah, up and I up feel, smash. It feels like he hasn't had the advantage in the approach game at all in the set. And the game that he won, he, he he took advantage of a lot of mistakes from Kiro, but he never he didn't get those openings himself, you know? Like I I I wonder Yeah, he's just having trouble finding his footing against what Kiro's yeah. doing. A nice conversion from Kiro, even though it's, it's impossible yeah. to hit the Z cancel on back air. Oof. Okay. When you hit a character, it just doesn't ever <laughs> register Z cancel. <laughs> but we have video evidence now. <laughs> yeah, I know.